Hey gang, it's your boy Flat here today with a special video. A uh, video I've been wanting to do for a little while, but I wanted to wait until I got the all clear from my doctor, which I got last week, so I feel safe on uh, discussing this topic. And as you can tell by the title of the video, Diabetes and Alcohol, My Story, this is just my story about how I've dealt with diabetes, and more importantly, my relationship with alcohol, considering I have a YouTube channel about alcohol, something I figure I should talk about, um, something that I have not uh, talked about yet on the channel, but I thought now is time. Like I said, I've got the all clear for my doctor, so everything's good there. I want to start this video off by saying I am not a doctor. I'm not handing out any medical advice. I'm not claiming to know anything. I'm just going to tell you my experience with diabetes and alcohol. Um, as you can probably assume by now, I was diagnosed with diabetes about this time last year, into January 2020. I'd gone in the doctor for a checkup, got a little note from the doctor, hey, we got something here, you need to stop by. And she told me I was a diabetic, type 2 diabetic. That's uh, one thing I want to make clear real quick. I'm talking, throughout this video, I'm referring to type 2 diabetes, not type 1 diabetes. Uh, type 1 diabetes is generally childhood diabetes, or I think they call it early onset diabetes or whatever. And that's the one that you basically lose the genetic lottery. You didn't do anything wrong, just your body and insulin just did, doesn't work out. Type 2 is the one that you eat too many potato chips and get lazy and get, and that's what happened to the big guy here. Um, just uh, like... You can imagine being a Las Vegas bartender, being a little bit older, being a little bit heavier. Nothing surprising there. A um, few quick stats on diabetes, just to kind of tell you what, what a big deal this is. Roughly 34 million Americans, or a little over 10% of the population of the United States, has diabetes. Now that includes type 1, but I think only like 1 or 2 million have type 1. This is mainly type 2. Again, this is people just... Not taking care of business at the end of the day. Um, last year, or a couple years ago, I want to say there, there are about 1.5 million new cases a year, and I was one of those new cases in 2020, um, which is just, it's too high. And finally, 26.8% of seniors, or a little over a quarter of all seniors in the U.S. have diabetes. That's just a shame. It, it really is, especially because when well, you're adults, you should be able to manage yourself by now. <laughs> doesn't necessarily work out like that. And that's kind of where I want to start um, this video. I want to talk about first how I got there to diabetes. And you say, well, that's pretty obvious. You're fat. You know, a little more complicated than that. I just Also, too, I think it, it was a great way to figure out how to reverse engineer out of it. Because if you're diabetic, well, let's quit being diabetic. How do we do it? Well, we got to reverse engineer it. So let's talk about how I got there. Um, years of bad choices, not just the fun ones in the bar, but <laughs> just, uh, I've always been heavy. Probably, probably when I was five or six, I was probably a regular size kid, but probably about seven or eight, I'd already started kind of putting on weight. And as a child of the seventies, you know, going to McDonald's became more of a regular thing. Uh, the snack aisle in your grocery stores just really started to expand. Just variety of junk food. Uh, the number of junk food restaurants. Also, too, by that period of time, you know, things like a Coke or a Pepsi weren't just a treat. It's something you kind of drink every day then. And, you know, no one thought twice about it. You know, people were still smoking in public, you know, back then. You know, they were still... Crap, I want to say there were still TV commercials when I was a little kid for cigarettes. But it was just a different time. Um... And so it was a lot of those, you know, poor choices we were all making back then. Then, by the time I got old enough to drink, well, now you're adding alcohol on top of it. Well, you know, it's just carbs on top of carbs, calories on top of calories. You know, it's one thing to go out and have a cheeseburger and fries, but you had a pitcher of beer to that. Now you're really doing something. And uh, also, too, it was, uh, you know, the mixers. Uh, I was for years a Jack, Jack and Coke guy by the gallon um, out here playing video poker. If you saw me at bar playing video poker, 7-7. Seven seven. I used to call them rock candy. Or I used to tell my bartenders, give me a 21. They're like, 21? Yeah, double 7-7. Seven seven. <laughs> 21. 
Uh, it's just it was just years of that, and that's the funny thing. That's the thing about diabetes. It doesn't happen one night. It's not well. I eat cheesecake today, or whatever. It's years, just years of small little bad decisions every day that just keep adding up, and that's that's how I got there. Um, and again, at the end of the day, I did it to myself. That's one thing about type two diabetes. I can't blame anybody else as much you would like to. Dead to myself. So next, let's get into how I reversed my type 2 diabetes. Because I did reverse it. My doctor gave me the all clear. Reverse type 2 diabetes. I'm not on any medication anymore. Um, luckily, I wasn't on uh, a lot of medication. But now I'm off that. Um, let's start with that. Like I said, I was diagnosed last January with diabetes. They gave me metformin. Uh, that's kind of a generic... Uh, Drug, like I said, I didn't have to take insulin shots. I didn't have to do dialysis. Uh, they use a scale called the A1C uh, to determine if you're diabetic, how diabetic. And the range, I want to say, from either 4 to 14 or something, it's something like that. Generally, if you're 6.5 or higher, you're considered diabetic. Anywhere from 6 to 6.5. Some doctors may say 5.8 to 6.5. That's considered pre-diabetic. And uh, it's a measurement of your blood sugar over like a three-month period. Not just, you know, again, if you go in and eat a candy bar, well, yeah, your blood sugar's going to be up, but that doesn't mean you're fat or nothing. You know. And the same thing is if you hadn't eaten in a day, well, your blood sugar's going to be low, but that doesn't mean you're skinny or in great shape or whatever. So anyway, the A1C is kind of a running three-month scale of your blood sugar. And mine came in at 7.4, which officially was diabetic. Um, after, uh, taking charge of my life a little bit, uh, and many of you may or may not notice in the videos, these shirts are a little large now, and I don't have the best lighting, and I'm not Brad Pitt or anything like that, so it's hard to tell, but I've dropped 70 pounds since my diagnosis. Um, I remember reading something early on when I first was diagnosed, it said if you could drop 10% of your body weight, that generally was enough to get you off medication and that was my goal that was one thing I told my doctor when I got diagnosed was that all right this is temporary I'm reversing my diabetes and I'm getting off the medication a lot of doctors and this is where I have to pick on the American Medical Association is a lot of doctors all right you're diabetic we're gonna sell you meds for the next 30 years and uh, try to lose five pounds five or ten pounds that's what she told me I was 320 pounds you like, yeah I lose 10 15 pounds what the no, lady, I need to lose a lot more. But that's kind of what they tell you. And they just kind of like, all right, well, we'll give you some meds and we'll finger wag at you and we'll leave it at that. But you can reverse it, but you got to take serious measures. And like I said, 10% uh, body weight was what uh, I had read. Obviously, I went well past that, but that's kind of what you got to do. Now, how did I do it? If you research uh, diabetes, it's really about carbs. Now, and that's another thing I'll pick on the medical profession. They start telling you about a low-fat diet, but fat does not spike your insulin or, you know, your blood sugar or anything like that. It, yeah, it makes you fat, but it doesn't affect diabetes, which what we're talking about here is diabetes. Um, so I went low-carb. I went keto. Um, you know, no more baked potatoes and mashed potatoes and pastas and stuff like that. I've only had a few slices of pizza in 2020, and it drive me crazy. But that's what you got to do, and that's what I did. Uh, also, I did some intermittent fasting. If you're uh, not familiar with that, definitely check it out. Um, basically, I eat anywhere from noon to 8 o'clock at night, and the other 16 hours I don't eat anything. That includes, you know, like a milk or anything, you know. Even liquid calories. Just, just water, you know, pretty much those other 16 hours. And I found it would be a great benefit, not just for what it did for the, the blood sugar and the diabetes, but just digestion in general. I found it really, really helpful. Um, also, too, I got to, got to working out. Um, I'd, I'd actually been working out for a while. Uh, if you find my original video... From like fall of 2014, I was at my peak. Then I was 340, and I wasn't working out at all. 
About a year later, I think I started working out a little bit. I dropped some weight. I got down to about 300 at one point, and then I got back to 320 or whatever. But I kept at least 20 pounds off, which would have been good enough for my doctor. Um, just, just by working out some, like three, four days a week at the gym. But when the pandemic hit, no gyms, what are you going to do? I got to walking. I'm lucky there's a couple of parks by the house, and I just walked. And, and I'll get into it later, but go take a walk. It just, it's good for you in so many different ways. And uh, I, I walked a lot of this off. And again, I was trapped in the house. I couldn't work. I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't go to the casino or a bar or do anything. So I went and walked. Um, and I did, now as far as how alcohol went during this time, that's a lot of people probably wondering. My doctor told me when I was diagnosed, she's like, oh, you can have a drink or two a day, you know. Um, and everything. But again, in her mind, she's like, well, this fat boy probably drinks six a day. If I can get him down to three to four, I'll be doing a favor. And again, she probably had, she probably thought there's no chance he's going to drop all this weight. But if I can drop 10 pounds or, you know, I'll, I'll try. But uh, anyway, she told me that, that I could have a beer or two a day. Um, I knew that I had to cut the carbs. And again, I like beer and I like real beer. So I knew that wasn't going to be an option. But I did do some research. And we'll get into this a little bit later. That if you drink straight spirit, whiskey on the rocks, scotch and water, something like that, with a no-calorie mixer, that you actually end up dropping your blood sugar. Well, I thought, well, that's great. And I drank already. I like all kinds of stuff, as you guys know. I'm not just a beer drinker or a wine drinker. I don't drink pina coladas all the time. Or I love a good scotch and water, so I thought, all right, I'll go, you know, whiskey water. Unfortunately, I dove into a bottle of uh, Suntory Tokai one night, and the next morning I woke up, my blood sugar was way too low, to the point where I had to get a couple of bur bean burritos from Taco Bell just to kind of get my blood sugar back up. So I ended up basically spending most of March and April sober. I was like, I just got to clear this up. And again, during a pandemic where you're not working, can't go to the gym, can't do anything, and you're sober, spring 2020 was not, not easy on yours truly. But we did what we had to do, and that's, you know, that's the takeaway from that. So real quick, let's talk about alcohol and diabetes, do's and don'ts, suggestions. Again, I'm not a doctor. Uh, one of the things uh, that I found interesting in the talk, discussion of alcohol with drinking alcohol and diabetes was people talking about calories. Well, it's got calories. You can't have uh, calories. Calories. You got to lose weight. You gotta... Diabetes is about blood sugar, not necessarily about weight. Those two correlate a lot, but it's not, there's a difference in correlation and causation. You can eat, if you eat 10,000 calories of anything when sitting, that's too much, you, you'll end up gaining weight. It could be kale or it could be, or it could be cheesecake. Now, cheesecake will spike your blood sugar. 10,000 calories of kale won't. So it does kind of matter what calorie, you know, where your calories come from, carbs, protein, or fat. Alcohol has calories, but doesn't have carbs. So it's not going to spike your blood sugar like carbs would. So just uh, a little note on that. Uh, now, breaking down alcohol in different categories, spirits, like I said, if you're drinking just straight spirit, again, a, you know, Jack on the Rocks, um, vodka soda, you know, with a no cal, your blood sugar actually drops. Now, again, you want to be careful because if you haven't eaten, because, hey, I'm watching calories, I'm not eating, and then I go to drink, it could affect you too much to the downside. So you want to be careful. And also, too, one thing about that is if your blood sugar gets out of whack, you kind of act like you're drunk. So if you've been drinking, a lot of people, oh, I just plan to drink, and well, I'm leaving alone, where I might need, you know, I might need some medical attention. So that's something you definitely want to be cognizant of if you're diabetic and have a drink. Uh, beer, carbs, carbs, carbs. Unfortunately, and as much as I love beer, there's just, beer is going to have a lot of carbs. It's just the way it is, especially the bigger beers that I like. You know, your 
classic big German doppelbox and stuff like that, or a barley wine, or a, you know, imperial stout, those are going to have just a ton of carbs. Um, sorry, you're just going to make a executive decision. Either I can have one big beer, or I can have two Bud Lights, Nicola Ultras, what have you. Um, it's just just the way it is. And and I think about now, how, yeah, if somebody in 1995 would have pulled me aside and said, hey, Bud Light instead of Bud. Or instead of Jack and Coke, Jack and Diet. I might, 2020 might not have happened to me if I make those small adjustments there. So, and that's part of the reason why I do, want to do the video. Make some small adjustments now, even if you're not, me, I'm almost 50 now, you know, 30s, 40s. If you're young, make make the right moves now just make your life easier uh wine real quick on wine wine is not as bad as people think um that sugar that goes into wine i i have this discussion on a lot of my videos everybody thinks oh god that's going into you I, no that is for the yeast and the yeast turns that into alcohol which you put in yourself um wine is not as bad if you find a, a good dry white wine it shouldn't spike your blood sugar that much Obviously, bigger reds, fuller-bodied, sweeter reds, you know, stuff like that. But if you find a good dry wine, it shouldn't spike your, your blood sugar too bad. Uh, but what will? Liqueurs. Um, and, of course, I love making liqueurs. You've seen the videos, whatever. But um, your Jägermeisters, Fireballs, Grand Marniers, uh, too much sugar in them. And, and, again, you've seen my videos. You know how much sugar I put in them. There's a lot of sugar in them. Um, and that's something I will say, if you get diagnosed with diabetes and are a drinker, there's some things you're going to have to let go. I hate to tell you, <laughs> you're just going to have to let it go. And liqueurs are one of them. Um, again, have a scotch on the rocks, have a, a lighter beer, have a dry white wine. But, uh, you know, B-52s and those crazy layered drinks and double Baileys and that, yeah, Probably going to have to let that one go. Sorry sorry about that, kids. But that uh, it just, it doesn't work. It's too much sugar. And again, at the end of the day, it's about your health. You have alternatives. Just skip the liqueurs. Uh, so real quick, not to make this video too long, I want to kind of wrap up with some main points. First and foremost, if you're a drinker, you know, and again, I'm a perfect example of it. If you're a guy's, Gotten in your mid 30s, mid 40s, you're a little overweight, da, 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 and the doctor pulls you aside and says, Hey, you're pre diabetic or diabetic. You know, we're talking about type 2. It's on you. It's on you, man. And it's just you have to face it that, hey, I did this to myself. I haven't taken care of business. I haven't either worked out or I've ate too much or I didn't make, you know, again, I haven't switched from Jameson and Ginger to Jameson on the rocks or something. You just got to face it. And you don't want to, don't live the lie of, hey, just lose 10 to 15 pounds. That'll help you. If you get to the point where I've got, again, if you're 300 plus pounds, if you're in your 40s, you're overweight and you're diabetic, you did it to yourself. And you just have to take charge. You can still have fun. Life, there's still life. And you can reverse it too. Like I said earlier, you can reverse this. You just have to take charge. You just have to own it. You know, that's about it. Uh, also, too, I want to remind you, though, you can have a drink. Um, the days of drinking like a frat boy are over. And it should, should have been over before. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a prime example of Las Vegas bartender. And I still live like a frat boy up until the last couple of years. Um, yeah, you, you still have a drink. You just got to watch your carbs. Switch your drink. You're, you're an adult now. You know, if you're... Again, you've gotten to my age, you've gotten into your 40s, close to 50. You're an adult now. You don't need, you know, all the shots and all that stuff. Have a, be a gentleman. Drink a scotch and water. Drink, you know, tequila on the rocks. Act like a, don't, don't be the savage anymore. Act like an adult. And last but not least, I want to encourage everybody, uh, even if you're not diabetic, if you're just heavy like I was, and still am, I mean, I'm, I'm still 250, I'm not, Small, but 70 pounds is, is a good bit of weight. Uh, walk. Man, just walk. As good as it is for your body, it's better for between your ears. Just 
I don't think I can tell everybody. 2020 was a goofy year for all of us. And again, it was a really goofy year to be a diabetic and lose a job and this, that and the other. During a pandemic, you try to figure it out. And a good walk just, just helps a lot. Um, I, I can't suggest enough. Get outside with nature, breathe some fresh air, and go walk. Uh, real quick before we wrap up, I do want to, and I'll leave links down below to two doctors I'd followed throughout this whole process. And I think they do a great job of giving some great information and kind of helping you through this process. Uh, a gentleman named Dr. Jason Fung. Dr. Fung has several books out. Uh, one I read was called The Diabetic Code or Diabetes Code. I can't remember. Um, and he has a separate book called The Obesity, Obesity Code. And he kind of talks about the similarities but differences between if you're morally obese and you're a diabetic or and or, you know, one of the others, how you can solve that. And he goes into the, you know, the keto thing, the intermittent fasting thing or whatever. But really shows a lot of science and actual evidence, you know. Um, real great. Check him out. And there's also another doctor, Dr. Ken Berry, he, his YouTube channel. He is really great on the keto diet, intermittent fasting. Really breaks some myths about a low-fat diet versus a low-carb diet and how those affect diabetes. Again, we're talking about diabetes, not necessarily obesity, even though, again, those kind of correlate, but we're talking about diabetes. And again, it's the carbs that spike your blood sugar that lead to that. He does a real good job of kind of explaining that. Because some doctors will tell you, oh, don't, don't eat steak or eggs or there's too much fat. Well, what does that have to do with your diabetes? If, you know, that's your singular problem, obviously. If you have other problems, cholesterol, gout, water, then, then that changes it. But anyway... Dr. Jason Fung, Dr. Ken Berry, I will leave links down below to their YouTube page. You can go check that out. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or, again, I'm not a doctor, but if you are diagnosed with diabetes and just have any questions or any way I can help you out, anybody else that's going through that, feel free to contact me in the comment page or on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.